Hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. Did you know for a while now that the Wildlife Department has been aggressively updating and even building brand new public gun ranges, just like this one here at Lexington Wildlife Management Area. Federal grant money from hunters and shooters is helping to make the possible. And all you need to use them is a hunting license or a conservation passport. We at your wildlife department recognize the important roles that good marksmanship and gun safety play in enjoying hunting and all the many other shooting sports. Watch our website and social media for announcements of new free gun ranges across the state. Just another reason to love Oklahoma and the adventures that await you. here below Call Dam trying to snag a paddlefish. It's uh, early January and these paddlefish stay here year round. We have a population uh, specifically in the winter time it's really good snagging from the bank um, and then you know obviously with a lot of release below the dam in the spring and summer it can be really good but uh, this is my favorite time of the year to come down here and they've been catching a lot of fish and some really big ones lately. So we're just going to give it a shot. It's fine. Catch one, you think there'd be one right there. There was a fish on it. Yeah. I mean, I was hung up, but look at that. No, it bent it out. That's the second fish I've hit and it breaks instantly. I may have to tie like a mono leader on it. I'm going to do a knotless rig. Uh, I'm no expert at it by any means. I've seen other people do it better, but it tends to work for me. So I double up my line, run it through the, the eye of my treble, and I bring the the down line, the side that you're going to tie the sinker on, bring it down against the straight part of the treble. I'm going to wrap my loop one, two, three, four, 
five times. Then I'm going to make that loop go around all of the prongs of my hook. Try to keep it loose enough to pull it tight, which is always the hardest part. There we go. That was a whole lot easier than it normally is. <laughs> For our conditions today, I like a five, weight, a five ounce weight, approximately 18 inches down from my, from my barb, or not from my barb, but from my treble hook. Barbs would be illegal, don't use them. Just a simple, only simple if it works out simple. Simple overhand knot, slip your weight back through it, cinch it down. Maybe a couple extra overhand just for good measure. And that's it. Well, we happen to pick the only day of the year that the Corps of Engineers is going to do a prescribed burn on the other side of the river. He just helps clean everything up and uh, helps keep invasive species out like cedar trees and helps control Cerisa lespedeza, uh, lets them get, get some different things uh, uh, cleaned up like driftwood and, and everything else. Hey, don't let the time of year get you down. Uh, paddle fishing can be had year round here in Oklahoma and it, it's, it is one of the greatest, if not the greatest state to fish for paddle fish uh, that I'm aware of. See, I like gar. I like smoked paddle fish. Pretty good that way. Some of the frustrations of paddle fishing begin when you can't can't hit one. Uh, I have some friends that were down here, or know some guys that were down here less than 10 days ago, and they caught over 30 paddlefish between two of them. And today, we may have bumped one, we may not have, and I've caught one gar. So that's just the luck of it. But when a waterfowl hunting slow, um, and you're in this area, it's a good place to try it. You might not catch anything like we've experienced so far today, or you might catch 20, you know? It's just a luck, just like fishing, just like anything else. Um, some days are good, some days aren't. Maybe next time. We're here at uh, beautiful Lake Murray today, one of our oldest and largest state parks in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, my name's Cliff Sager. I'm a senior fisheries biologist with the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife. Uh, we're here talking today about our bass populations and some of our fisheries management that we do throughout the state. A recent angler survey that we conducted in 2019 showed that largemouth bass was the number one most sought after species of fish in the state of Oklahoma. Now this isn't surprising to us. Uh, largemouth bass have always ranked one or two for all the years that we've conducted that survey. But one of the things that was kind of interesting to us was the very large percentage of people uh, that release all or nearly all of the bass that they catch. This is something that's a trend that's been going on for 20, 30 years and is really common across all of the Southeast United States, which is catch and release. And a lot of us have heard about catch and release. It's been popular for a long time. But as fisheries managers, we have to ask ourselves, has, has catch and release gone too far? And from my perspective, I think in a lot of cases it really has. Harvest is an essential component of fisheries management. It's one of the tools that we have to shape our populations through bag limits, through length limits. But those things are completely ineffective if none of the fish in the population are being harvested. Recent studies that we've done on some of our popular bass lakes show that less than 3% 
of all bass caught were actually harvested, which means people are throwing back all of these fish and really the catch and release mindset is very ingrained within bass fishermen. And I think it's something that we need to reevaluate. The pendulum of catch and release has really swung too far. Back in the 80s when harvest of bass was, was prevalent, was, was common, we needed protection for those fish and catch and release was a way to do that. But nowadays, very few people actually harvest any bass and so we need to reevaluate how that's shaping our populations and whether it's an effective management tool for our lakes. Now we've studied over the last few years uh, over 100 bass lakes in the state of Oklahoma, looked at the data that we have as a resource agency. And what we found is that roughly 82% of all the bass in our Oklahoma lakes, whether large and small, are less than 16 inches. So these are the fish that are less than two pounds. That's the majority of the population. Now, what that creates is a situation where we have crowding, where we have competition for food resources. And what we would like to see is a reduction in that competition. By doing that, we would see faster growth in our bass, we would see larger sizes, uh, and more quality bass fishing opportunities for our anglers. And so what we're doing is we're trying to encourage anglers. It's okay. It's okay to keep a bass. Uh, a lot of us have heard that it's kind of taboo, or someone said you shouldn't keep bass but it's okay. Now what we're talking about is responsible harvest. We don't need all of the three, four, and five pound fish in a population to be taken. Those are the fast growing quality fish that we would like to see their numbers increase. But the smaller, the legal size fish that are on the smaller end of that scale, those are the ones that it really would be helpful for us to remove some of those, kind of thin the herd if you want to think about it that way, to free up some of those food resources for the other bass so they can grow faster, grow larger, get to that three, four, and five pound size range. So the next time you're on your favorite lake, you're fishing for bass, give some thought to whether you should release or harvest a few of those smaller fish that you catch. Think about what good it would do for the population. Uh, does it do any good to release all of the fish? Or would it actually benefit the population a little bit more if you kept some of those smaller fish uh, that you caught. Take them home, make a wonderful fish dinner for your family, for your friends. It would be a great use of that resource and actually would be good responsible management for most of the lakes in the state of Oklahoma. So again, next time you're out, don't be afraid to take a few bass home. Hand me my wiggle wart there. My state champion wiggle wart. I can't believe you didn't give him that fish. No, I didn't. I used my lures. If I still got him, I may put him in there. Oh, Gary Storm gave me one to replace it. Main thing is make sure the hooks are all sharp before you start, because they got tough mouths. When you, when you land a saw guy, you better have a net because you don't lip them in like you do bass. Well, I guess we're about ready to start. Put these lures out. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and use my red one. Run this line out here. See if we can find our holes where these saw guy get into. We're running about 10 feet of water right now, but we'll go in through some 12 when you're trolling for these saw guy, you have to, you can go in 10, 11, and 12, 13, 14, sometimes they're in at seven feet. You just kind of got to find out where they're at. We're going through a hole right now. She dropped from a, from 10 to 13 right quick. And now she's back up to 12. We're going to be going through another valley or a depression or a gully, whatever you want to call it in this lake. And a lot of times them saw guy get right in them bottom of them or right on the lips of them and look up and they watch something swim across and they'll run up and just dart up and get it. My wife and I were out here last Saturday at 730 we put on some uh, Texas shad and went in close to the bank she caught a five and a half pounder about seven foot eight foot deep. We're running in 11 now I'm gonna take this this one out a little bit further and see if they're out in 13. Let's see if we can stop here and roll them in and catch them. Need to turn around. 
Hey, I may have picked one up. Did you? I think. Either that or I caught trash. Nah, I hit trash. Or it's a strike, one or the other. Well, I didn't catch no trash. I don't, no, maybe you I, had a, I may have a fish. Did you? Not a big one, but I got I got a fish. It's it's no, it's not. Well, yeah. I don't not know. Another ten k. No, it's a fish, yeah, but it's, it is. it's crappie, I think. Sand bass or crappie? Sand bass. Yeah. Little sand bass. He hit it when it stopped. Ah, easy. I'll let you go. <laughs> Boy, they, too bad you wasn't about three or four pounds. Yeah. Go tell your dad I want to catch him. I'll let <laughs> him go too. Then you, He's not very big, Fred. Well, this ain't no record, so. Here, let me get him. That's bigger than mine. Well, you first fishing, big fishing. That's me a new fishing partner, looks like. Uh, I'll let you catch one after a while, Randy. Thank you. <laughs> Boy, they've got them sharp hooks. You better have your pair of pliers. Yeah. You know, blarmer. Well, you well, got my yours. fish loose. You can have your fish. All right. I can already tell yours bigger than mine. Yeah. Look at them spots on that. That's how you tell the difference between a walleye and a saw guy. Well, they got the white tip though, like a walleye does. Boy, they got them teeth though. Look at that. Don't lift them things. Now, let's get them in here. We can play with them later. Not bad. No, no, off to a good start. Hey, there, get him on this side. He's taking my pole down again. Out. There he goes. There you. Come on, big saw guy. Come on. It is. I see. Hey, come up. That's good. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, you might got first fish, second fish, but I got the big fish. I guess you did. You. Ow! There's yeah. five, Randy. Right? Hey, I'll hold him. You get him. That's nice. He's not big as my state record, though. Okay. Look at that fin. Raise that fin up. Look at them, look at them spots. Man, that's nice. And look at them, look They're at them pretty. teeth there. That's sure pretty. Yeah. Man. You talk about fat. Well, I tell you what. They're growing, aren't they? You bet. If things will dress out, there's so much more meat on one of these fish than there is a bass or anything else. What, about five pounds? Yeah. I probably. think it's about five pounds. Maybe a little more. Might be. He's not my, he's not my state record, though. That's all. We'll get down. <laughs> Yeah. Let's put him in live well. Get in there, boy. Well, that's pretty good. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You might as well see if we can get some more. Um, today we did our 33rd successful release of a bald eagle back into the wild. Um, it's been a long, you know, we've been open since 2006, so a long 14, going on 15 years. Um, I did a ceremony here um, for this eagle and for the people that was here. Um, the Iowa tribe and other tribes in the United States and throughout, you know, the Canada's and in you know, Mexico, um, we use eagle feathers for traditional reasons. We believe, my tribe believes that the eagle was the only thing to see the face of the creator. So when that bird flew out of the sun, it dropped feathers to us. And we believe if we use those feathers, 
um, for ceremonies, then um, the God takes those prayers. We use that cedar and that smoke, then God will take those prayers and, and help us out. So when we did this for this eagle here, um, we prayed that he would take off and fly very well, really well. And I prayed for all the ones that were here, the ones from the Eagle Aviary, my family, my little girl, and the ones from Oklahoma Fish and Wildlife uh, Department. Um, so we use these feathers in the ceremony for um, a lot of good things. So um, I was given this right by my Uncle Victor um, when I was about eight years old, and I've slowly learned the craft of it and able to be able to use that cedar and that tobacco and those feathers for that purpose. Um, that's a little bit about what I did. Um, the Awe tribe is uh, one of 39 uh, federally recognized tribes in Oklahoma um, and one of uh, hundreds of, throughout the United States that have those same type of values. So. I mean, I thought it was really cool. I mean, the, the, the fact that, that they can rehabilitate these animals and put them back in the wild uh, is, just, is just tremendous. Uh, I want to thank, uh, thank the tribe for all their hard work and the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife for what they do and the support that they have uh, for these beautiful, beautiful, majestic animals. You know, as a game warden, it's awesome to see uh, the birds that we pick up get released. It's, we don't always get to do that, so it's an awesome experience. And then to, to see the ceremony that they, they do to go along with it, um, it, it makes it that much more special. So, pretty awesome. Every year we have a number of calls come in on injured birds or other injured wildlife. This particular call come in to Spencer Grace, who's the K County Warden. The bird was actually in Osage County, so Spencer relayed the call to me. Uh, I went out to the site and the bird was right off uh, highway, highway 60 which runs through Osage County and the bird was surrounded or being chased by a bunch of young cattle steers and there were about 10 cars that were watching this eagle because he was so visible to the highway and so I, I showed up and I went out into the field and uh, caught the bird with a net and at that point, once I knew that it was an eagle, I contacted the, the Iowa tribe and we agreed to meet later that night. And so that was the process and how we come about the eagle. It was from originally from the public uh, calling, trying to get help for the bird, the call coming to the dispenser, coming to me, and then I called the Iowa tribe. Larry called me once he had obtained the bird from Spencer and we met up here at Sooner Lake to, uh, for me to get the individual. It was about 11 o'clock at night and we were able to get him back to our facility for an assessment and future care. Um, so he didn't have anything that was broken, there wasn't any toxins in his system and so essentially it came down to a soft tissue injury and those can take a short amount of time to a long amount of time to heal. Um, but this guy is doing great out in his cage. He's able to fly from end to end, obtain food out of our pond, um, and he was definitely ready to go back to the wild. So we're a unique state that we have both uh, golden and bald eagles here in Oklahoma. Um, we're run by the Iowa tribe of Oklahoma, in which eagles are a very, very important uh, part of their culture. And so we invite anybody that wants to come out to learn about eagles, how they play into the tribal uh, culture, how they play into the ecosystem, uh, to come out and visit us at the Grace Snow Eagle House. Well, we hope today's stories remind you that Oklahoma is such a perfect state to explore. So however you choose to enjoy our state's incredible natural world, remember that your adventure starts with Outdoor Oklahoma. Good. Okay. Outdoor Oklahoma is produced by the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation and is proud to serve and be funded entirely by sportsmen and women and outdoor enthusiasts who love and appreciate all things wild in the great state of Oklahoma.